I'm going to show you really fast on how to do a takeoff so you can calculate the math yourself. Okay, it's a really fast way to do it. I've designed 750 structures that have been built. Uh, so I'm going to tell you how fast I do them. Okay, it's really simple. Take your calculator out. Okay, this is your fictitious house right here. So how big is your fictitious house? It's actually... 2,450 square feet because that's what the United States and Canadian government say that the average house built was in 2020 was 2,450 square feet. Okay, that's the average. Okay, so that's that's apartments, that's uh, condos, that's uh, uh, townhouses, uh, single family houses, right? Residences, not hotel motel. Okay. They also say that the average wall height is nine feet tall. So that's our average fictitious house. So whenever we do math and we tell you, oh, we're 31% less than going to Menards and buying studs, it's all based on this average house in North America. Okay, so that's your fictitious house, 2,450 square feet. So I drew it out, okay? So 68. 44, all of the outside math all adds up. Obviously, I made sure. And so you have 216 lineal feet of wall. It actually came up to 214, but I already did my math at 216, so uh, what's one extra stud amongst friends? Okay, so strength value proposition. T stud versus a two by. So let's talk about the T stud. The T stud is twice as strong as a two by six. Sometimes, depending upon the plate, it's four times as strong. So this is a strength value proposition. So all of the engineering, all of the testing, all of the technical evaluation reports have all been designed around doing 24 inches on center to save you lumber and to reduce our carbon footprint. Obviously, if we can keep building at, at our current rate, uh, we're gonna run out of lumber. So this is a big number difference. I'm gonna show you this number, it's actually staggering. No, how many less studs you need. Okay, we're two and a half inches wide on the flange. Flange versus the spline. So we need less studs. We need less fasteners. We need less of everything. Just use half inch high strength drywall. That's it. That's all you got to do. Okay, so where do you put the flange? Well, it depends upon who your friend is. Uh, what we've been framing lately and helping frame They've been putting the flange on the outside for the sheathing. So wherever there's a sheathing butt joint, they put it right here. And then they flip all the rest of the studs over and do them on the inside so that you get your drywall seam or the majority of your drywall onto a two and a half inch flange. Modular home people, I'm gonna say uh, almost all of them we met with, the two and a half inch always goes to the inside because they can glue their drywall to this so that they can minimize cracking when they transfer or ship your uh, your house structure, building, apartment, hotel, uh, tiny house, whatever you're gonna build. You get that drywall, you get that big surface uh, width to glue the uh, drywall to. Okay, minimize cracking, saves lots of money down the line. Okay, so the T stud, 24 inches on center, strength value proposition. 16 inches on center for the two by. Why did I, why did I choose 16 inches on center? Because again, the Canadian government and the US government say that 90, uh, 92% of all builders do 16 inches on center. So I'm just going by the law of averages, but uh, strength value proposition here, we've packed past wind load five. That doesn't pass wind load five. So we, we just, we just over-designed and over-engineered everything. Everything's already done, okay? So you can use less. Yes, we're more money. We're more money than, than the lowly two by stud down there. So when you run the math, you need 108 T studs over here versus 161 studs. That in itself pays for us. Okay, so from there, what else do you calculate? You got king studs and you got jack studs every time you have a window. So my fictitious house here has 10 windows and doors. Seemed, seemed uh, reasonable. So you have two, you have a king stud and a jack stud on each side. So you have four, so I added in four. And uh, I took them at seven feet tall because when I did when I did these studs, I went right through the windows, went through the windows, went through the doors because you always need some extras. So you always go right through the middle of them. Okay, so king studs, jack studs, you need 280 lineal feet. Sill plate, 
you need to add a little bit in for sill plate to cover what goes below the window. I didn't dot do headers here, by the way. Uh, so you need 40 extra feet for to cover your sill plate. Now the corners. The corners are interesting because again, we designed it to be energy efficient. So uh, I can tell you back in the day uh, when I framed, we did what's known as a four corner pocket. We actually did the pocket aiming outside, so you had to insulate the pocket when you framed, and hopefully it wasn't raining out. So this is a four corner pocket. Uh, you start this wall, you run this way, this wall goes this way, and you got a drywall nailer. That's a four corner pocket. I bet 50% of the builders still do this, okay? In my math, that's not what I did. In my math, I did, I did a little smarter route, okay? Because more, more and more builders are doing a three corner pocket. You got your wall running this way, you got your nailer for the drywall here, and you got this wall runs this direction, three corner pocket, that's what that's called. The T-stud on the other hand, so this is how you frame, so I'm helping you out at the same time here. So we always say start a wall with a two by six because it's, it's too hard to insulate a bare naked T-stud when it's shoved up against the end because you're poking in insulation. If you're doing a blown in bat of some sort or a spray in product, no big deal. Start out with a T-stud. Otherwise, start out with a two by six. But if you take this wall then at a two by two by or a, or a bare naked T-stud and this wall with a T-stud, you get this nice, beautiful thermal break all the way around the corner, 96%, uh, including the top and bottom plate. So that's that. Uh, this wall over here, by the way, uh, this, this is a 76% efficient wall because you have 24% 24, 24 framing members. This actually, 161 studs, and all of this math, that house has 24% of the entire wall is a bridge to the outside. So if you're air conditioning your house and it's bloody hot on the outside, you know, San Antonio, Texas, Arizona, Florida, it's really hot out there, you don't need a stud finder to find your stud, do you? Nope, you just put your hand on the wall and you can feel the heat coming through. That's what affects your utility bill, right? Electricity to run your air conditioning, it goes through the roof. The T-stud, is that 100%? Nope. Even if you put rigid insulation on the outside, it's still not 100 because there's three square inches of nails in every single sheet, okay? So this is, uh, we're 96, depending upon how you build the wall, 96 to 98% uh, uh, thermally broken wall assembly. That's where we get the majority of our energy efficiency from, just from the stud itself, is stopping the ability of the heat or the cold to come through that wall. Okay, so once you add all this up, a two by over here, two by six or two by four, you need 1,884 lineal feet of stud. On this side, you need 1,310. That happens to be uh, roughly 30%, 30% less studs. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of trees. That pays for us, and that's what you end up with reduced utility bills, right? I mean, our goal as a company is to reduce the grid, the future grid. Our doubling rate is what, 30 years? So in 30 years, you got double the number of people, double the number of streets, double the number of everything. So if we can make structures that are significantly more energy efficient today, we can we can slow down that that growth curve that where we have to double double our infrastructure. Okay, so there's that, okay? So this right here, I can tell you when we priced out, um, I'm not gonna tell you the name of the store, right? So today is May, uh, May uh, 18th, I think it is. So May, t May 18th, 2021. Uh, two by six studs are through the roof, 26 bucks. OSB, uh, down the street, I was there just the other day, they were $45. I know today they're 54 bucks. I know in Montana, they're $80. Depends upon where you go in the country. And where you're going to go buy them from, OSB, uh, it's a lot of money. Okay, so uh, so this right here, value proposition, okay, we, we haven't found anybody who's not all in. Okay, this is, this is a really good deal. You take your 2 by 6 out, you stuff us in, it's a complete no-brainer uh, wall assembly. It's really simple. Okay, that's that. We did, we did end up... Um, uh, coming up with a way to get rid of the OSB. So back in the 70s, 60s, 70s, and 80s, we had metal cross bracing that went on the wall assembly. So we're having a technical evaluation report done. 
we get rid of the OSB, you do metal bracing, it's all designed on the T-stud. And in, I don't know, 75% of all structures, you get rid of the OSB, right? So now what are you gonna do? You put the metal, metal X bracing on, it stops the ability of the wall to rack, because that's what OSB does. So you take off the R5, R.5 OSB, and you put on R5 Neopore foam. Why Neopore? Well, it happens to be made without a blowing agent. So global warming potential of, I think it's one, two, or three. Uh, it's got a perm rating, so it breathes. So the, uh, we bought a large load, loads. Uh, comes, with a, comes with a face around it, so all you have to do is tape it off. And this wall, uh, I know the math, okay, so I ran it. So this math right here versus going down to the street to the local yard uh, national brand, brands, we took an average of the brands, we're 131% more energy efficient right here for 21% less than buying two by six material and OSB right here, okay? It, this is the five and a half. If you did the seven and a quarter bare naked T-stud, we are 161% more energy efficient and we're 14% less over here. Uh, yep, you still had to go buy insulation because you had to buy insulation anyway. Insulation's cheap when you're just stuffing it in the wall. So all the wall assemblies, we don't care if it's a bad insulation, we don't care if it's blown in fiberglass, blown in cellulose, uh, 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 closed cell foam, open cell foam, doesn't make any difference. So it's all about energy efficiency, build the most energy efficient structure that you can for the money. Okay, that's the bottom line. This is passive house quality right here. And all you need to do now is solve for ACH. Guess what? With the Neopore foam with the facer on the outside, we'll give you all the tape to tape up the whole entire outside. Now you get your air changes per hour down to what? 0.21? So we have plenty of studies out there. 0.21 or 0.25 or under 0.5 for ACH, air changes per hour and you get a wall that's got an R value uh, 28 to 35, somewhere in there, your utility bills are less than half. You build a structure that's that energy efficient, and now you've reduced your furnace and your air conditioner in half. In fact, you got rid of the metal ductwork and you put in plastic pipe. So our goal is to build them for less money and build them for more energy efficient. It's just a, it's just a system. It's just math. It's just a recipe, right? Okay, so the T-stud recipe, Unhook the hinges from the outside to the inside. Stop it, stop doing that. Then put as much insulation in the wall. For us, we're gonna, we're gonna see if we can help you out in putting Neopore foam on the outside, okay? Once you get done that, then solve for ACH and you're done, okay? I'm Brian Iverson, I'm T-Stud. There's your little 101 study on how to, how to calculate the studs in a wall assembly.